Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, and this will be part 254, and our lesson today is the fall of angels. <coughs> Scripture indicates <coughs> when a judgment is pronounced on Adamic man as a race, it also includes the angelic beings that led him into rebellion. Hmm. <clears throat> so there's a dual judgment. We see examples of this. Turn to Genesis, the third chapter, verse 14. Okay. Okay. Can you still hear us? Okay. <clears throat> and the Lord God said unto the serpent because thou hast done this thou art cursed above all cattle and above all <coughs> and above <coughs> every beast of the field now the word cattle there comes from a Hebrew term <coughs> Behema. 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 Which means beast. Behemoth. Now this is not behemoth that you read about in Job. That's a different word. So this is referring to um, creatures of uh, the earth. For that. That doesn't include humans as beasts. No. Okay. No. <clears throat> it says, uh, Every beast of the field and upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. So when Satan wound up causing man to fall, he didn't escape unscathed. Right. He was cursed. He was a judgment put on him. But it doesn't specify whether that judgment for the Luciferian happens at the same time as the judgment for the human. Merely, it's a judgment. No, <clears throat> most cases it does, but oh, in this okay. one it's delayed. Okay. And it says that there's a curse is going to fall on him in a future date. You find out that about, turn to Isaiah 65, verse 25. <clears throat> it says that he'd go up on his belly <clears throat> and he'd eat dust all the days of his life. Isaiah 65, verse 25. Hmm. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. So when, this is talking about the uh, millennial period starts. The earth is going to be transformed into a paradise. Everything upon it will flourish. Satan will be in the <clears throat> neither regions, on his face, covered by worms, eating dust. Hmm. Yes. During the millennial period, will everything flourish equally, or will there be more, more flourishment in other areas? No, <clears throat> everything will be uniform. All will participate equally. I'm talking about the Earth in the millennium. All will participate the way they were designed to participate in the creation. In the eating of the dust uh, by the serpent at that time, I take it that this is representative of death or a form of death it's literal okay so there's no nutrient or nourishment coming no in. So no 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 what no. purpose it's is that it's a curse hmm. it's a curse <coughs> the eating uh, of dust is a curse yeah it's, he isn't doing it voluntarily hmm. he's doing it because he's in a position in a situation where he's surrounded by corruption and uh, filth and slime and uh, 
is just overwhelmed with it. Like take you take somebody and throw them into a vat of um, putrid, um, uh, molting uh, material. They're okay. covered with the stuff. Can he move at that time? No. Okay. No. No. He's on his belly, mm. <clears throat> face down. Totally <clears throat> drained of his power <clears throat> and subject to whatever <clears throat> he, a, area he happens to be in, and which says basically it's the bottom of the bottomless pit. Right. So that's this curse uh, manifesting. On your belly shall you go. He's going to be laying on his belly. He won't be able to do much more than wiggle <laughs> and uh, <laughs> try. What he's trying to do, of course, is to get out from underneath all this stuff this putrid uh, surroundings the more he tries the more he's ingesting this stuff but he's still released at the end of the thousand year period mm -hmm. so the Lord gives him back his, his dunamis he gets his power back gradually okay it's like you, you when you rest up you get strength again right. so by the time of the end of the thousand years he's powerful enough to go out and deceive okay. the nations let's go on <clears throat> Genesis 6 chapter, verse 7. <clears throat> 6, 7. And the Lord said, this is YHVH, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Now when it says created, it uses the same term that it uses when Elohim creates. In Genesis 1, man is indeed a creation, but he is a temporary creation, not spoken into existence, but constructed. A creation, nevertheless, didn't exist before YHVH brought him into existence. Yes. So that term YHVH is using, and the term that Elohim uses, is bara. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's interesting that YHVH is permitted to use the word bara when he is not the creator, he is a creator. A creator, yes, but he's, man is an act of creation. Okay. The human race didn't exist as it was before YHVH did what he did. But it's not a creation in the in the same sense of Elohim's creation. It's a much lower creation. Right. It was a temporary creation. He cannot create eternally. But he can construct and bring into thing bring into being things that didn't exist before. That was the point I was going to ask. Did it exist before? And no. You're saying yes he can. Well, you're saying that he, he, can. He, he can do things that didn't exist before. Yes, he did. Man, notice what it said in Genesis 3rd chapter. Man became, yes. man became a living being, a breathing creature. Didn't exist that way before. YHVH made an act of creation. Hmm. But he cannot create on the order of Elohim. Okay. When Elohim speaks, things come into existence and they stay. They're eternal. Okay. YHVH does an act of creation it's, or anybody else. Right. It's temporary. Gotcha. Okay. No created being can create okay. eternally. Only the creator. Yes. Okay. So we said that the word bara, mm -hmm. create, yes. is both used by YHVH and Elohim. And the word bara means exactly the same thing. It is not temporary creation for L for YHVH, it is eternal creation the same way the Father. Except no. for the Father speaks it speaks things into existence and he borrowed he his way to bring the bara together was different than the Elohim. No creation means bringing something into existence that didn't exist before but <coughs> the the state of perfection of the creation is what differs. No created being can bara eternally, Externally. but a created being can bara. Well, we're living in a bara. Okay. Satan has a temporary creation here. Right. It's not good. <laughs> it falls apart. 
period. It's not lasting because mm. he can't create eternally. Okay. He creates <clears throat> on a level, and what he brings in, this thing didn't exist before. Right. It was ruinous corruption. It's as a result of what he did in manipulating. Remember what the scripture we talked about last night? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Those who love and make a lie. Right. Okay. Make, that's a creation. You're making a distortion, a temporary uh, state, which is no real state, but it's a state because it has effect upon individuals. If there was nothing there at all, no secondary, well, secondary creation is constructive, no primary creation. But you see, in, in my saying that, that's a nonsense because the host is involved in the primary creation. Mm. Is there some way for a member of the host, angelic beings, mm -hmm. forget about the secondary for the moment, purely primary. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for uh, uh, an angelic being to create something that didn't exist at all? I'm, I notice when you're describing this pseudo-reality, mm -hmm. there was something here before the pseudo-reality you know, came about. In other yes. words, the pseudo-reality pseudo is a change of that which existed before. Yes. And my point is, is it possible for a primary being to create something where there was absolutely nothing there previously? No. no right. So that's the point that he's making. Last night. Yeah. The point I was bringing out was, okay, so we have a level of creation, and then we as the sons of God, we take that and we draw out the potential out of the creation like it's never been before. Right. So in, in essence, the, the, the products or the, 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 the materials right. are been made, brought into existence because of yours and my development of the race. So right. in essence, we're bringing something into creation that never was. Great. But the, 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 the issue, my, as I understand it here, is if there was no creation, could we bring those things into, into play? Now, my answer to that would be yes, because we're part of the Godhead. YHBH, I don't believe, would be able to do that because there's nothing there at all. Yes. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. That's right. You have the creation. Anything within the creation cannot create mm -hmm. on a permanent, eternal status because right. it's created. It's dependent upon the surroundings in which it exists. If you're outside of the creation, right. then yes, you have the ability to bring things into existence right. because you are not limited by right. anything that's Interesting. finite. It's just curious that the same word is being used. Precisely, yeah. that's my that's, point. That's curious. But we now understand that the intent, of the longevity, I should say, of the act is, mm -hmm. is the key to all of this. Yes, mm. yes. It is a question of state of perfection. Right. Stunning. <clears throat> That's gone. So, <clears throat> in verse 7, the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing in the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. So we have undoubtedly proof this is not Halloween. Right. So, the judgment is pronounced on the human race. Now, turn to Jude, verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate their prime administrative jurisdiction, but left their own habitation, they left their prime function, their prime location, and came down to earth and sent the human race into rebellion. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So to the time that the flood took place, <coughs> individuals that were bringing man to this degenerate point in which they were being judged also came under judgment in present in the uh, neither regions but since we oh I, that's the great day the point that they were at the point at which they were imprisoned in neither regions is that what you're calling the great day great day is a great white throne judgment so then they're in prison waiting 
for the judgment that okay. everybody, the okay. whole creation. Yeah. This is a, this is a future thing. As yes, the about. second mm -hmm. stringers. I was I was just going to uh, ask the second stringers in Luke twenty one twenty five. Mm -hmm. 25, 26. Hold that question. We're going to get you know there. Where I'm, all right. I know where okay. you're going. Let me yes. sit on my hands. I, okay. I, I appreciate the anticipation. But what we're finding here is a principle being illustrated. There are groups of these beings. Right. Okay. And it's not one overall slam bang situation and all of a sudden the human race is under bondage to. You have groups of these criminal fallen intelligences, okay. all of them, when they get the opportunity, they're doing the same thing to the human race. So therefore their judgment falls in, in tranches yeah. in different times. So because their sins haven't been paid for, they're held, they're held accountable for considering what's been offered to them. Does that give them, does that give us an understanding that God put within each man the ability to to contemplate, discern, this doesn't seem to be correct. Sure. Right. Yes. yes. He expects them right. to come to that point, to that conclusion. And having come to that conclusion, to then pursue truth. Exactly. Seek. Seek. Ask, mm, not, not question. Yes. Don't be content with your circumstance, which is the one thing that people have tried to avoid at all costs. Mm -hmm. But let's go on. <clears throat> Exodus 12th chapter, verse 12. Exodus 12, verse 12, when we get there. Wise Ridge speaking, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, talking about men and animals, both man and beast. And, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment, I am the Lord. So these guys that the, the humans have been building pyramids for anticipating the time when they're going to enter into the neither regions and, and placate them so that they uh, will have safe passage are coming under judgment at the same time that the human race is coming under judgment hmm. now when the gods of Egypt are punished, mm -hmm. are there any other God small g punished with them? Nope. Just the ones that are responsible for it. I understand they're all fallen. Right. They're all going <clears> to <throat> basically be an overall judgment that can be read in Jude that great day. All of them. Um, the demons told Jesus, you come to torment us before, right, the time. before the time. So all of them are going to come under a judgment. Mm -hmm. But you have certain groups that have put themselves in a situation where they're coming under a judgment now okay. or at the time that they commit excess transgression, right. <clears throat> which lays heavy on them until that time. Yes. See, he is being specific. All the gods of Egypt, as yeah. he, who he's judging, as, he, as he's bringing up, other others, India, you know, med, you know, other areas around the world mm -hmm. that have gods... Are they being judged at the same time? No, no. no. So that's a good This is a specific, a right. specific yeah. judgment. Right. This sounds like <coughs> the human nations, Gaza, Ashkelon, and so on and so forth, being judged before the rest. I mean, the whole world yes. is under judgment. Exactly. But theirs comes a little bit earlier. Yes. Mm. That's it. Okay. That's it. <coughs> Next principle Scripture teaches. The current world order is a manipulation of fallen angels in the heavens above man. Ephesians 6, chapter, verse 12. Yep.
Well, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, human beings, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, of this age, the cosmocrators in the heavens directly above us, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's established that you have a group that currently is in progress to, uh, because of the damage that it's caused to the human race, put itself under judgment. Turn to Psalms 82. Verses 4 to 7, when you get there. Now we see specific accusation in this, <clears throat> in these passages of Scripture. Deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. So everything you see today that deals with injustice, war, death, is attributed to this group. This is, this is the indictment that's being spoken against them. You guys have the ability to mitigate matters in the human race. And instead of mitigating matters, you are making it far worse. <clears throat> Notice what he goes on to say. I have said, your gods, and all of you, all of you, he's so talking about the group, are children of the Most High. So he's talking about angelic beings that are the sons of God, mm -hmm. the recreation, primary spirits. But ye shall die like men. I want to, I want to focus on this a little bit because it's unique. <clears throat> Notice he does not say what ordinarily would be said to a human being. <clears throat> what he says to a human being is if you do so and so and so and so, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands what's being said. Mm -hmm. What he says to these beings is if you do so and so and so and so, you're going to die like men. What is he saying? Angels can't die. <clears throat> what he's saying is you're going to die the same way that men die. <clears throat> because the judgment that's being pronounced on you is connected to the men that you've corrupted. And so when they go, you're going to go. Notice what he goes on to say. You shall die like men and fall, not foul, like one of the princes. So two things. If a human dies, he doesn't fall. He's dead. That's it. He's out of the picture. Yes. Okay, so when the human dies, there's a memory. So I would think that there he's talking about a, a much deeper, when you're dead, you go out of memory. You go out of existence. Is that the same thing? Is that what's being said here? Well, no, he's comparing the death. They experience the same thing the humans experience when they die. What do humans experience when they die? You're drained, your energy. You're no longer are able to locomote. You're no longer going to function in this environment. So they're not being annihilated. They're just dying. They're being drained yeah. to the point where they cannot no longer function. The Angels dynamic. operate in dunamis, right. power. Right. Everything in their environment is a manifestation of dunamis. The level you exist on is mm -hmm. determined by the dunamis you are able to manifest. Okay. We see this particularly illustrated in the, in the uh, activities of the beast. He's going around amalgamating as much dunamis as he possibly okay. right. can to elevate himself over everybody else. Well, that, I guess, is like <clears throat> breathing air to a human. Sure. Mm. Or energy to a human. Okay. People put uh, uh, their their 
admiration in an athlete. This guy has strength. He's got the ability to do this, do that, do the other. You remember in history they talked about the universal man, homo universal, yeah. mm -hmm. who could do all these things. Mm -hmm. Well, basically what's being said here is <clears throat> the judgment is going to come on you is you're going to be drained of your power to a point where you are totally incapacitated. So what's going to happen to Satan? The same thing that happened to him is going to happen to them. It's going to be drained. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 10th chapter, I believe, says, I will famish all the gods of the earth. They're going to be drained. Totally incapacitated. And then they're going to be cast down, fall, to imprisonment. Do you have a question, Mariko? Okay. So in this respect, what he's talking about is a joint judgment it's going to take place. You're going to fall like men. I mean, you're, you're going to die like men. While humans on earth are being cast into the neither regions of hell, so will they. Do the princes, the kings, who are pinned right now in the subterranean regions, know that the second stringers will be um, dealt with first. I believe so. So Satan knows that he's going to die like it because he reads the Bible. Sure. So he knows he's going to die uh, sure. uh, die like man. Sure. But, he, but does he know that he's going to be used later on? No. Okay. No. No. Beside that, everything he knows is distorted. Doesn't matter what he knows. The scripture says no truth in him. He can't right. see objectively. Okay. Yes. So he's going to be put in the death region, mm. but he will not get the eternal damnation until he's been released to deceive yes. and then God finally puts the last so I'm thinking Mr. Jones mm -hmm. is Satan going to be talked about in you know after the millennium <laughs> it'd be a memory that faded long ago mm -hmm. no no nobody's going to as a matter of fact it talks about in one of the scriptures the memory of all of this will very shortly pass away because people are going to be enjoying life. Who wants to, to focus back on this death zone? But his region will eternally exist where he's at. In uh, the neither regions of uh, the lake of fire, that's going to exist eternally. But, so there is no, for lack of terminology, visitation. There is no observing it where, where, where he's at. at. Could, could you see what he's experiencing? Could you, ex you mean from eternity? Yes. During the millennium? Yes. Yeah, sure. After the money. No. Okay. No, the most, the most that would be observed after the millennium is a corner where only the humans are going to come and look across right, chasm the gap. Okay. and see what's going okay. on. Everything else, as far as that, if you're in the heavens, that don't exist. Right. So his estates, Lucifer's estates, will be controlled by a Protodicus elder at some given time. Sure. Hmm. I just lost sure. her. Remember what we said. God wipes the memory out yes. of all evil and wickedness. That's why if you at the great right throne judgment, everybody is going to be judged that ever lived. So you had uh, a beloved uncle that died and went to hell. And they calling forth the great right throne judgment. He's standing there before the throne. You're looking at your uncle that you and him had this close relationship with and you, you know, it breaks your heart to see what his ultimate end would be. Yeah. You're not going to recognize him right. as that you ever knew him. Right. He's just going to be a soul that is in an indictment. Right. This, 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 right. this. And God does that. that. Yeah. He wipes away memory hmm. from himself let alone everybody else. So you won't be feeling any of the sadness or anything like that. No. So it won't be no. significant. Not at all. The, the idea all. Of, of the father removing his memory of a living being sounds like the worst death that anyone could possibly experience. Sure. The scripture talks about you, you are erased from the memory of life. You do not... But in actuality, you don't have an existence because existence only exists in life. Okay. Death is non-existent. Okay. And Curious. in that respect, anybody who 
has received redemption, glorification, cannot experience death. Mm. No knowledge of it. So it's something beyond, which it is. It's taken beyond the veil of the domain of existence. So based on what you're saying, should we understand that as we sit around this table right now, we are already immortal? Sure. Hmm. Wow. Look, the scripture tells turn to well, turn to Colossians. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to take you up. No, here. no, we'll we'll continue this uh, the next time. We don't really have that much uh, First chapter. Twelve and thirteen, Colossians one. <laughs> Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet, are fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We have been recreated through the new birth to experience life in light. Light is the element of life in which we will internally exist. Absolutely. Now, verse 13, Who hath, past tense, past tense, hath delivered us from the power of darkness mm. and hath translated us, taken us from one place and deposited us in another place, translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. So spiritually, you are no longer in the element of darkness. You exist totally in light. Unless you voluntarily put right. yourself back right. in that element. So at the point of the born-again experience, that translation puts, puts the being into a new reality. Sure. The old creature is dead, so that, that old creature cannot partake of the new reality. Exactly. And you're experiencing new reality as a new creature, exactly. as something that you do, you were not before. When we receive our inheritance at the gathering, when the rapture takes place, everything that you, 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 and me are experiencing now will not exist. Hmm. No aspect of corruption will exist. Mm. The way you think, the way you speak, the way you see, the way you hear, it's going out of existence. You're going to function as you do on the inside totally. Abundant life. Yes. Do we begin to experience what you said at the beginning of sorrows? Or is it at the glorification? You can begin to experience it now. Mm. But people don't because they hold on to the carnal. You have the ability, remember we talked about frequency modulation, your yes. spirit can increase if you allow it to, if you get off the earth willingly, you can begin to experience realms right above this one where you do not have this garbage that you have to constantly be dealing with. Yeah. It's not taught, it's not understood, but unless you go into the Bible and read it for yourself. 